Welcome to the Lifelong Basic Suturing video. I'm going to teach you this surgeon's knot and the square knot in this video. And for practice, you can get off Amazon.com the cheap suture pad, the needle driver, the forceps, and some cheap sutures, as pictured here. And before we get started, I want to show you a little demonstration on bite width and bite depth, which is how far away from the wound you're placing your needle and how deep your needle goes. So in this particular scenario, you want to use your best judgment as far as placing your needle at insertion site or your bite uh, from the wound or incision. So for this scenario, we're going to use the green line as one centimeter and one centimeter away from the wound means you'll go two centimeters deep with the needle and that's pictured here. Now the one and two centimeters are only just a guide and only serve as the idea on how you want to insert your needle. And how deep your needle should go in relation to your distance from the incision. Ideally, the tip of your needle should come up on the other side of the incision or wound at about the same distance as your other insertion site. And as you can see in this demonstration, the entry and exit point of your needle is roughly the same distance from the incision. When deciding on where to insert your needle, generally a good rule of thumb is the exact center of the wound. And again, putting this uh, insertion and exit point at roughly the same distance from the wound itself or incision line. And after completing our first suture, we can then decide on where to put our second suture. And there's two ways to do this in this particular scenario. We'll want to go ahead and do it immediately left or immediately right of the first suture, keeping your bite width and bite depth the same for each suture. And then after your second suture, you can place a third and a fourth, again alternating sides, and keeping the bite width and bite depth roughly the same so your sutures look nice and even. Now again, this video is just demonstrating the single interrupted suture, which is just the basic suturing technique and the simplest suture. When doing these types of sutures, you'll generally want to keep them straight, not crooked, and keeping the same bite width and same bite depth. So what you don't want is sutures like this. And demonstrating another wrong way to do it is having the suture length longer on one side than the other. Now getting into the real demonstration, you'll have already wanted to clean your incision or irrigated your wound prior to suturing it up. That way it reduces your risk of infection. Now, using your needle driver or your hemostats, you want to grab onto the needle on the posterior one-third on the flat area to ensure that you don't damage the needle prior to inserting it. Once it's good and comfortable, you want to take your forceps and don't pinch the skin like so. You want to just kind of support it while you're inserting the needle. If you pinch it too hard, you can certainly do the skin more damage. Now for your larger incisions, you may have to do one needle stick per side before you complete the suture, but on this small incision here, we'll just do one needle stick in general. Once you determine your approach, you'll need to identify where you want to insert the needle at. Just like in the demonstration, in this incision, we'll use the exact center of the incision to go one needle stick and go all the way to the other side with the same bite width and roughly a bite depth of double the bite width. Remember to insert at a 90 degree angle, you'll want to supinate your wrist or turn your wrist over so that your palm turns towards the ceiling. And you'll have to do this relatively in a short and quick motion to be able to get the needle out in the right spot that you want it. Otherwise, the needle will come out too close to you and too far from the incision. Once you pull your needle out with your forceps, again, not crushing the tip of the needle, you want to pull the excess suture till you have a short end and a long end like here. And again, if you can see here, you'll have the same bite width roughly on each side of the incision. And again, this is just a general rule of thumb. So as you see, both sides are roughly the same. And here I'll just point out again that we inserted the needle at roughly the midpoint of the length of the incision. So you're same on both sides here. Now to secure this first suture, we're gonna use the surgeon's knot 
which is pictured first on the bottom is the two loops and then complete the knot with the second one on the top which is one loop so there's two ties for the surgeon knot as with any knot so the first one we'll demonstrate here now a good rule of thumb until you become comfortable tying sutures is placing your needle driver parallel over the incision and after you're parallel to the incision making sure you're inside the suture here so we're going to loop it twice and then turn our needle driver perpendicular to the incision and grab our small end and pull it through and we're looping it twice and pulling to pull the incision together nice and tight not too tight but this will allow the incision to stay together while you get your second loop ready and again we're going to loop it and then in this time i'm not going to grab the tip of the short end i'm going to grab in the middle and then you'll see what happens if you don't grab the tip so you'll have to pull it through here extra and you don't want to do that so just remember when grabbing the short end of the suture to grab the tip, not the middle. All right, to complete your first interrupted suture here, you want to finish off with a square knot, which is just one loop, towards the center there, and then grab your tip, pull through, perpendicular, and then one more single, which is looping towards the incision, and then again, perpendicular, grabbing the tip, and pulling through. We completed four ties total, one two loop and then a single making the surgeon's knot and then one loop and then one loop making the square knot now since we've got our first suture done here and pulled our knot to the one side of the incision and trimmed our excess we can determine on where we need to place our next suture now here's where you have two options you can certainly measure the bite width and go to the left or to the right immediately of the center making sure that the bite width is the same the other way you could do is split the difference again, just like we did the first one. We split the length of the incision, and then you can split the length on either side. So starting with the left, we'll do that here. Remember, going 90 degrees, holding the needle at the posterior one-third with your needle driver should be the flat part of the needle, and then pulling it through with your forceps, ensuring not to crush the tip of the needle and making sure you're supinating your wrist properly to be able to get that needle out on the correct side and not too far away from your incision. And then again, just making sure you pull your suture material through so you have one short end and one long end. So we'll demonstrate the surgeon's knot and the square knot once again. So starting with your needle driver again, parallel to the incision, in between the sutures, you want to wrap twice, then turn perpendicular, grab the tip of the short end of the suture material, and then pull in perpendicular across the incision, again making sure that's not too tight. Then we want to go parallel again, wrap towards the incision, grab the tip of the short, and then pull through perpendicular, completing the surgeon's knot. So again, after the surgeon's knot, we're going to do the square knot. So again, start parallel. Do one loop this time. Grab the tip and then pull. Parallel, wrap one loop. Grab the tip and then pull. So that completes the square knot, which completes this single interrupted suture here once again. Pulling the knot to the same side as the other knot for the suture. And for the right side, you can split the length again from the middle suture to the end of the incision. Just like I did on the left. And then repeat that process until the incision is closed. Making sure to fill the gaps by placing sutures equally distanced from each other to close the incision completely. That completes the basic suturing video. Please visit lifelongnursing.com. And if you like the video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.